Welcome back, everybody. Thanks for joining me again. I would like to propose a toast to everyone who has ever survived a divorce from a narcissist. <gasps> that includes me. Oh my gosh, it's over. I'm officially divorced from Satan. <laughs> over, and I could not be more relieved. Um, it's been a little while now, but uh, it still feels brand new. It's still <laughs> exciting. It's still like somebody took this weight off of me. Someone lifted the clouds from over my head. It is insane. I still, I can't get over the feeling. I cannot get over this feeling of happiness and weightlessness and elation to be out of that relationship, out of his grasp just over it all. It's unbelievable. I'm pretty sure I could be wrong. I'm pretty sure I broke a record. I had court in the morning. It was like 9, 9.30, whatever, downtown. And by lunchtime, my name on my driver's license and all my bank accounts was already changed. That's how fast that happened. Like, lightning speed. I'd not mess around. So, <laughs> there's that. So, yes. Going forward, he will only be referred to as my ex if I'm in a good mood or Satan. Uh, just like all the toxic people in my life, I don't even refer to them by name because I don't feel like they deserve that. My mother, I refer to her as uh, Mommy Dearest or Cruella. I was reading a, <laughs> some tabloid trash the other day, came across that, uh, about that woman. I can't remember her real name, but everybody called her Octo Mom, the one with all the kids. And I was like, Wow, I mean, she's like really kind of an awful mom. I thought, that's my sister. So I call my sister Octo Mom, and I call my brother Fredo. And for those of you who have seen The Godfather, that's not really flattering, but that's how he's known around here. So when you hear me refer to those people, you know exactly who I'm referring to. I know a lot of you are wondering, how did everything go? You know, what was the outcome with all these things? Well, you know, Mr. Sass, I got my jewelry back and got my things from the house that I wanted, that I needed. Um, I was really satisfied with all that. He spent so much time and effort and money to just circle around and, and have us come right back to where we were gonna be anyway with me getting everything that I had coming to me. And then there's this little thing called a quadro that's in process where you pay this company and they divide your pension and your retirement account and your ex-wife gets half that's happening. I don't know. I don't know if he thought that wasn't going to happen or if he threw enough money at it, it wouldn't happen. It's happening. I get a lot of questions about things like that and I'm not an attorney and I'm not about to give legal advice. And really what I tell everybody is find an attorney and go have a free consultation and get all of those questions answered. Find out what you're entitled to right out of the gate so that you're not wondering, you're not scared, you're not concerned that you know you won't be able to afford this process or afford to leave somebody who's abusive. You really need to go and find out and get these questions answered. So really in the end, everything truly went the way I wanted it to. And some of the things that happened in the process just are truly unbelievable. I'll share a story because I could truly fill a book with them. I can't believe the things that uh, that went on. Near the end, I decided um, we had a uh, marital home. And I decided, you know what? If this will speed things up, he can have it. You know, there was some negotiating to be done in the MSA. And I was like, you know what? He can have it. Let him pay this bill and pay that bill. And we'll wipe the whole slate clean. He can have the house clean and clear. Over with. And everybody had a fit, you know, my attorney was like, you know, we just finished the MSA and, and you're changing, you know, you're throwing that out the window. I'm like, yeah, I offer him the house. I called her up and I said, offer him the house, give him 48 hours. Well, first of all, attorneys don't like being told what to do. They didn't like the idea that I was basically scrapping their entire MSA between the two of them because his attorney had a fit too. And I thought, well, this is my proposal, so I'm going to do it on my terms. And my terms were, I will give you the house. You have 48 hours to say yes or no. I thought it was pretty simple. I think deep down, not even deep down, I knew because I know him because he's a moron. I knew that Satan would say no. I knew that he would grapple with it all weekend and he would wrestle, what's she doing? What's this about? And you know, blah, 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 blah. I, I knew it was just going to be, it was going to mess with his head. 
But then I thought, well, you know what? If he does say yes, then I'm done. Then it's over. There's nothing to tangle about. Um, because if we get divorced and the house is still on the market, I still have to deal with this guy. I gotta deal with this joker and I didn't wanna do that either. I thought, you know what? I have absolutely nothing to lose here. So it doesn't matter if he says yes or no. I explained that to my attorney. She went ahead and, and you know, emailed his attorney and said, you know, she's she wants to give him the house. So, you know, 48 hours, yes or no. And, you know, they like their seven to 10 days. You know, everybody was in an uproar. When they replied, and it was a little over 48 hours, when they finally replied, his attorney, uh, you know, so snide and smug and, oh, this is preposterous. This is outrageous. I don't even remember what she said. But she thought, oh, this this is just ridiculous. Why would he want that? Hmm. Mm. Okay. So fast forward, the house finally getting prepped and listed. That's a whole nother ball of wax. I kept in very close contact with the realtor. Her and I are besties now. She's a great person, great realtor. The house went on the market. Um mid-afternoon late on a Monday by that night or Tuesday morning we already had two offers then uh, she called me that afternoon and I said well just I mean, and, and and everything's electronic now you get all of these um, emails telling you that there's a showing and there's another showing and who's coming and when so I said tell you what let all the offers roll in let them duke it out if they want to go ahead and fight right there on the front lawn let them do it give them till Friday tell them that you know we want to have all these showings and everybody can put bids in on Friday, so on and so forth. So when it was all said and done, we had like uh, between 13 and 15 showings. I can't even remember exactly how many. I know it was no less than 13, no more than 15. And four offers, all above asking price. So I'm sure that Satan kicks himself daily for not accepting my proposal and for not taking me up on just taking the house clean and clear because he would have made a mint, a mint. And instead of making a mint, he had to split it with me. Hey, all you can do is try, right? So I'm still giggling about that one. Still, like, I don't know where I'll just start giggling. I think it's hilarious. I knew it. So he can kick himself over that one till doomsday. Like I know he will, he should be, it was ridiculous and so I'm sure everybody thought oh wow hmm, we didn't see that one coming no one no one saw that one coming I saw it coming because I wanted to price the house higher I wanted to list it higher and I knew it was worth more and so on and so forth nobody wanted to listen nobody wanted to whatever 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 yeah lots of satisfaction in that one <laughs> lots of satisfaction in that one um if he sees this cheers cheers to you for splitting the house with me good call there were a lot of things that happened that, believe it or not, were very satisfying. And I share that, uh, yeah, to have a good laugh, um, but mainly because a lot of what I hear is they got away with murder. They got away with everything they wanted to get away with and none of it was fair, none of it was just. That kept rolling around in my head throughout this entire process and I'm like, that's not cool. <laughs> Whether it's me or anybody else, I don't think that that is just. Um, they, they put us through enough, uh, we deal with enough throughout our relationships with them, and in the end, there should be some, you know, justice uh, in the way things uh, part end, uh, you know, the way we part ways. That was a little unnerving, hearing all of the horror stories was a little unnerving. There are some horror stories where he's concerned, not where I'm concerned, and it's very, very satisfying, to say the least. I'll share some more of that. I'm so excited about the support that the page has been getting, the support that the channel's been getting, um, people coming forward and, and sharing their stories and asking their questions. Someone recently asked me, you know, about co-parenting and that person obviously um, kind of started at the end and didn't see some of the earlier videos. Uh, doesn't know that um, by the time I um, left the narcissist, left my ex, my children, were grown, you know, they, they were no longer minors. So I would like to hear from somebody who is maybe successfully co-parenting. I have yet to hear that. I have yet to hear somebody say, you know what, I've got this figured out and this is what I do because a lot of what I hear is still anger and frustration way down the road, way down the line, even as the children are growing up and that's unfortunate. So if somebody does have 
um, some feedback on a successful way to co-parent with an ex-narcissist, please share that, you know, let us know and um, put it out there for others to learn from. I will have more stories and some more to share very soon. Ciao for now.